is the last wet fly, a Ray Bergman wet fly in a series that I've done. This is called the Emma. And I chose this fly as kind of an extra uh, bonus wet fly uh, simply because I like the, the wing. I like the, the way this fly is put together, especially I like the colors. But uh, if you've seen the video on the Yellow Sally, you'll notice that pretty much everything about the tag, the tail, the floss body, the rib, and the throat are all the same as Yellow Sally, with the exception of they're just a different color. The wing on this is a uh, matched jungle cock shoulder, and I just think it's a very, very sharp looking fly. I haven't fished this fly yet, uh, but it is a very attractive fly. And um, like I said, I threw it in as kind of a bonus for the wet fly series to um, show people that all wet flies aren't necessarily matched and or married and matched duck quill wings. So that's the Emma and we'll go ahead and get started tying. We'll start Emma by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 33.99 hook in a size 6. I'm going to debarb this by mashing down the barb there. Because I'm using a floss body on this, I'm going to start with a white thread. This is a dark red floss, but at the same time, if I were to put a black floss under here, it would darken the red floss up when this gets wet. So I'm going to use a white floss underneath, and I'm going to wrap down to just the point of the hook and then cut away my tag, I should say tag of thread. This is where I'm going to put the tag for the fly in. I'm using a size 16 to 18 Danville uh, gold and silver mylar tinsel. This is a very, very fine tinsel. I'm going to secure this onto the hook with the silver side out, bringing this up under the thread to the opposite side of the hook. And then I'm going to advance 12 thread wraps down the hook. And that will put me, my thread hanging somewhere between the point of the barb and the bottom of the barb. And that's traditionally where we're going to start the tags on these, or tips. I'm going to start wrapping this around. You'll notice that it flips over to the gold side. I'm going to get five wraps touching wraps down the hook shank and then five wraps back up. I'll secure this on the bottom side of the hook. That way any butt end of this when we cut this off won't interfere with the tail. I'm going to set this aside for my rib in just a moment. Now flip this over and tie in our tail. The tail on Emma, <coughs> excuse me, is a uh, duck quill. This is a claret colored duck quill. And I'm going to cut out two slips, a left and a right, that are three to four barbs in width. I'm going to match up the tips on those and I'm going to measure those to about a shank length, maybe a little bit longer. And I'm going to secure those in right on top of the hook shank. Just a couple of wraps to secure those in. You can then divide those two slips there like that so that you can see that you got those tied in um, just where they're supposed to be. There you go. Generally, how you want this is the shank of the hook right here is going to uh, progress straight along and then come right along the top of the back of the tail. That's why our tag here is just a little bit beyond the shank of the hook. It's already started down the bend of the hook so that the body and everything comes back and it just uh, sweeps straight out on top of that tail. With our tail in place, I'm going to reattach my mylar tinsel. Again, silver side up. 
and bring that down into the, the body space, one wrap to secure that. Uh, because this is a mylar, sometimes pulling it underneath that thread, you're going to cause some curls in it. You can actually get that out by just rubbing your scissors on the back side gently of that mylar like this, and then that will get some of that curl out. like that and hopefully you can get that to stay out of the way but that's our rib the body on this is a four strand rayon um, floss in a dark red color um, although I am only going to use two strands of the rayon so I've selected those and I'm going to attach these to the hook by bringing them up under the thread and bringing them to my side of the hook and then pulling the floss back so that it is just the length of the body. At this stage I will start to wrap forward to secure the floss and the tail and everything to the hook shank. I'm going to <clears throat> counter spin my uh, thread to flatten it out. This just helps um, to keep a smoother uh, underbody so that that floss will be nice and smooth as we wrap the body of the fly. You'll have to stop <clears throat> once or twice to counter spin your bobbin a little bit to flatten that up. Be careful when you're wrapping forward that you're not pulling on your thread too hard and putting too much torque in there as you can pull all those materials over to the side. All right, with my thread advanced up to the end of the body, I am now ready to apply the floss. I'm going to stroke the floss out a little bit this is to try and get all of the fibers under the same tension. That way as I'm wrapping them forward, they won't separate on me. Be careful not to pull back backwards too far and grab that tail like I did and start to wrap over it. Once I get those first wrap or so in, everything's under the same tension, I can continue to wrap the body of the fly. Floss secured. I'll cut away the waste. And then I will apply the rib. <clears throat> when I start to palmer this rib or mylar over, you'll notice it flips over to the gold side. I want to have five evenly spaced turns up the hook shank. Keep in mind that you're third or middle turn should be right about the middle of the hook shank. You'll actually have a sixth turn. There's five and you'll have a sixth turn and the sixth one will actually come up just right the opposite side of the head of the fly. And then we'll trim away the, the excess. So as you can see here, with that body in place, it just is a nice, smooth, straight transition to the very top of that tail and on up. I'll now change over to the black thread. You could whip finish the white thread if you want and trim it away. I prefer to just attach my black thread, wrap over the white thread, and then trim the tag and the white thread away. I'm going to keep wrapping back to the end of the head 
this will basically tidy this up a little bit and give me a nice foundation. It also helps to define just where my headspace is so that it doesn't end up getting too big on here. And now we are ready to tie in the throat. Ready to tie in the throat for um, the Emma. And the original recipe calls for a light claret hackle. I do not have any light claret, but I do have a regular claret. Um, this is actually a strung rooster saddle hackle, not a schloppen. A schloppen is going to have more barbs to it. They'll be a little bit longer and, and they'll flow a lot more. But I do not have any schloppen in a claret color. The nice thing is that when you get a bunch of strung rooster saddles like these all strung together, generally you can find one that's going to have some fibers at the base of it that are, are very much like um, similar to a schlop and hackle. So I'm going to improvise and use some strong rooster in a regular uh, deeper claret color. I've already prepped my hackle fibers and I'm going to set those on the bottom side of the hook. I want the tips to be somewhere uh, past the point of the hook, around the barb of the hook, um, maybe into the bend, but not past the bend. I'll secure these on the bottom. I'll pinch, roll forward my fingers, bring my thread up on the underside with a pinching loop, roll my fingers back, and then I can put in three or four turns to make certain that the throat is all secured. That looks good and it's the way you want it. We can reach up in here, pushing our thread out of the way, grab the butt ends of those hackles gently. You don't want to pull on those too hard because you could actually pull the wing out of position and just trim away those butt ends. This is why it's very important to have some scissors that are very nice, have a nice sharp point to them. I'm going to move my thread forward to behind the eye of the hook here just to lash down some of those fibers. This will smooth things out a little and it gives me a nice platform for the wing of the fly. Now the Emma for a wing uses jungle cock shoulder. And off, this is off of a, a jungle cock cape. Basically it's these feathers right up in here um, that have the nice dark colors with the, the light centered line to them. You're going to pull a couple feathers off and match those up. These can be a little bit difficult to work with if you've ever tied any streamers or any flies that have hackles tied in as a wing like this. Uh, then you'll know that they have a tendency to roll on you if you're not careful. What I found is if I leave this attached, you could probably strip off some of the fluff, but if I just leave this attached, I can get the measurements on my fly where I tie this in. I want these tips about halfway. So I need to pull some more barbs back. But if I leave that on there, it helps me to tie those in and have not have them roll so much on me. And that's just about what I'm looking for. So if I secure these in my left hand, holding those the wing right in position, roll my fingers forward, I can do a pinching loop, bring that down, do another pinching loop, and that should secure that to the hook. I want that loop a little further back, not right behind the eye of the hook. I'll get in about four wraps and then see what happens. That's generally what I find often will happen is it it will uh, lay down a little bit to both sides. Part of that is the angle that we are trying to get this in. I want the base of, uh, or I should say this, this face of the hackle to be just right on top of the back of the fly. So it will be sitting up about 45 degrees. So that actually is pretty good. If you'll notice from the top to the bottom, it's not flared at the bottom too much. Um, if I can, I want to avoid that but I don't think you're going to because this is basically 
attached on top of a round body, so it's going to tend to want to push it out like that. But that's not too bad, so I'm going to put in three or four more wraps, working backwards a little bit, not too far, just to secure that in, and then I'll trim away the excess. With the excess cut away and those butt ends, I'll wrap across those to lash those down, making certain I'm um, all the way back in here and that's secure. And then I will bring my thread forward to the eye of the hook to shape the head of the fly. It looks like everything's covered, so I'm pretty good there. At this point, I'll Spin my bobbin counterclockwise to flatten out the thread, and then I will put in a seven or eight turn whip finish on the Emma to smooth off the head of that and finish out the fly. Again, this is a fishing fly. You start to fish this and, and actually start to catch fish with it even more so. This wing isn't going to stay looking so beautiful and nice and everything. But at the same time, there's something to be said for making certain that we try our best when we're creating these flies so that they actually are very nice. I think they're beautiful little flies. So I'm going to use some fly tight here on the head of this to soak down into the thread wraps and secure that. As soon as that is dry in a moment, we will, I will start to apply the hardest hull on this to give this a nice glossy looking head. So now that the fly tight has um, dried on the head of our uh, Emma here, it's ready for building up that nice kind of gloss coat on it. Uh, I'm using some hard as hull a head cement here. This is a clear finish that when applied usually takes about two to three coats. This will shrink back on top of all those thread wraps and it gives it a nice lacquered look. That last coat will smooth everything off real nice. As I'm applying it right now it looks like it's already all smoothed and has that nice full lacquered head look that uh, looks so good on wet flies but it doesn't. Um, as I mentioned the hardest hull will cure on here and it shrinks back down onto those thread wraps. So it usually takes two to three coats to get a nice smooth, fully smooth uh, head on that. And because it's a black thread underneath, it just has that nice traditional lacquered head look to it. So that will level out and that will cure. and will end up uh, after a couple of coats with a really really nice finished polished looking head on the R Emma. So that's the last fly in this series of wet flies that I'm doing. These are Bergman, Ray Bergman wet flies. It's called the Emma. Again it has a lot of the traditional parts of a wet fly except the wing on this one is just some matched uh, jungle cock shoulder. So there's a lot of different ways that you can put these wet flies together in terms of the tailing material or throat or hackle and wings and so on and so forth. But once you start getting into doing a lot of these flies, you'll see that they have uh, a lot of very standard, very common components and things are put together in a uh, very similar way. So 
a lot of these basic skills you can get down fairly quick. So, that's the Emma. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.